Hello and welcome to Titan HQ. In this video we will go through Spam Titan at an MSP level. Spam Titan is fully multi-tenanted. You can onboard multiple customers and you can have four different levels of access to the interface. The top level is the view we're looking at here. This is the MSP level where you can onboard customers view reporting, view quarantine, set global settings, set domain group settings, and you can also set per domain and per user level settings also. Beneath the MSP level is the domain group administrator. This is a level you can give to one of your customers who may have multiple domains and would like to view their own reports, add their own whitelists and blacklists, onboard multiple domains, view quarantine and reporting. Below that is a domain administrator who can view their own reporting, quarantine, whitelist and blacklist. And the fourth level is the user level where they can view their singular mail flow, their quarantine and their own white and black lists. So the first screen you get presented with is the dashboard. This is an overview of all mail that has touched the system. It gives you a pie chart of the mail flow, of the percentages broken down. It also shows you each day. So you can go through each day to see the total amount of mail, how many are spam, clean, RBL, relay denied, band attachments, viruses, and so on. When a mail comes to Spam Titan, a number of actions occur. Firstly, your frontline tests activate. These are RBLs, SPF, DKIM, DMARC, HELO checking. If a mail passes this, it then gets passed to our antivirus engines, which is Bitdefender and ClamAV. All mail is scanned by both of these and all attachments. If there's a suspicious attachment, which does not have a virus signature yet, this is sent to our sandbox for detonation. The attachment is opened. If any malicious activity is seen, this may be marked as a virus within your spam titan and reported accordingly. If it is clean, it is passed on clean to the end user. If it passes antivirus and sandboxing, it then goes on to our banned attachments. We have a number of attachments that are banned outright, and these can be edited at a global level, at a domain group level, and at a domain level also. If it passes the attachment scanning, it then goes on to our spam scanning. And we have a large number of spam rule sets, a number created by ourselves over the last 20 years. We also incorporate some third party signatures um, supplied from the likes of ClamAV and also Spam Assassin. So once you log in, the first thing you do is onboard your domains. This can be done at the System Setup Mail Relay tab. And this is the multi-tenancy. You can add as many domains here as you wish. You would simply click on Add, enter in the domain you wish to filter for, so let's say test.com, and enter their destination server. The destination server is their mail server or Office 365. So for this example, we'll say test.com is a 365 domain. So the destination server has a common syntax for 365. In this case, it would be test-com-mail-protection-outlook.com. The destination port can stay at 25. Recipient verification. This is to help against dictionary attacks, and it also helps to maintain the license accuracy. The most commonly used is dynamic, and the verification server would be the same as your destination server. When a mail comes to Spam Titan and you have recipient verification in place, Spam Titan queries the mail server to say, is this a genuine mailbox or not? If it is, we continue scanning. If it is not, we drop the mail. RBL, SPF and gray listing, these can all be enabled or disabled per domain at this level also. 
You can also assign this domain to a specific domain group, and I will go through domain groups in another video. But this is where you can associate multiple domains with a singular group, so an, a, an administrator at that level can log in and view their own domains. Click on Save, and now you've onboarded this domain. Mail authentication. So this is our anti-spoofing settings. This is the frontline test for anti-spoofing. So you have SPF, which you can enable, and you can bypass SPF by adding the sending IPs. They can be added individually or in a Cedar address format. We also fully support DKIM, DMARC, and ARC signing. All of these are supported out of the box with Spam Titan. We also support DKIM signing. Once you've onboarded a domain on the System Setup Mail Relay Domains tab, on the DKIM, DKIM signing tab, you can enable DKIM signing and you would receive your DKIM signature in here and you can add this to your TXT records. Next to content filtering and content filtering, this is our DLP aspect where you can create your own content and take action on that mail. We have two pre-populated content filters for, that look for credit card numbers and social security numbers. These are disabled by default, but can be enabled by editing to the right hand side. And you can take different action for inbound and outbound mail. So in this case, we're looking in the subject line or the body of the email for a social security number. We have a regular expression that is loaded by default inside of Spam Titan that will trigger on this. If a social security number is seen in the subject or the body of the mail, you can take these actions for inbound and outbound email. You can have different actions on inbound and outbound flow. Next to anti-spam engine, domain policies, we would always recommend enabling the quarantine report. This is a daily digest of email that will be sent to your end users so your users can then deliver, delete, or whitelist a sender directly from their Outlook client. Simply edit the domain, enable, and click apply. At this point, everyone will get a quarantine report each day. Quarantine reports are auto-generated once a day, but end users can request an on-demand report as many times as they wish throughout the day. When you click apply, this will take effect immediately. Next to settings and inter interface settings, you can white label the entire interface. You can upload your own logos, you can change the color scheme, you can change the page UI timeout. There's a number of settings you can change. If you would like the fav icon and the page title to be edited also, please contact our support and we can change this very easily for you. Next tab is filter rules. These are the global and the top level lists. So if you add a blacklist or a whitelist at this level, it will apply to all customers that you onboard to Spam Titan. On the quarantine tab, this will show you all mail that has been marked as spam, band attachment or virus. This is searchable also by sender email address, recipient email address and subject line. Wildcard searches are also supported. A star or an asterisk would represent a wildcard. By default, the message type is spam, but you can change this to virus, sandbox, band attachment, and so on. You can then release the mail from here, whitelist the email. And note here, if you do whitelist an email, that would mean this envelope from address, this sender address, will be whitelisted to this recipient. It does not go into a global level or a domain level whitelist. It goes into that individual's whitelist. In regards to the quarantine report we spoke about, you can set the time of day you wish this to run. It, by default, it runs at five minutes past three a.m. 
each day, but that can be changed. You can white label this as well. You can upload your own logo. You can change the actual headers of the email also. Next to the reporting tab, the main tab here is the reporting and history tab. This is a quite powerful tab. This shows you all mail that has touched Spam Titan, be it a frontline test like RBL, be it clean, spam, virus, band attachment, and so on. All of this will show up here. If we take this clean email, for example, if we click on this email, this will show us the headers of the mail. So we can see what date it was received on, who it came from, who it was being sent to. We can see that it was clean and you can see the SMTP response and the message ID. If we look for a spam email, click apply and do the same. We click on this email. We see the headers also, but because it's a spam mail and we're quarantining it, we hold on to the body of the email while it's in quarantine. So as we can see here, this is a clear spam mail, but we can also view the source and this gives you a lot of information. The default threshold for spam is five. So anything above five is seen as spam, anything below is seen as clean. This scored 14, which is quite high. So this is a guaranteed spam. And we can see the actual spam tests that are triggered on this. So as you can see, Bitcoin extort, um, a lot of Bitcoin signatures being seen here. So these are red flags for the spam filter. And there's a number of others. As I said, we've created a number and we incorporate some third parties also. So if we take this one, for example, you can actually find out what these tests mean. We have a website, a web page that will give you a one liner ex explanation for each of these tests. So if I copy this and I come here to our help desk, this is obviously quite a large page. So if I do a control F, as we can see, received in SBLS CSS, this means received via a relay in spam house SBL CSS. If there's a mail that you feel maybe a false positive and you're, you're seeing these scoring quite a lot, please contact our support and we can actually edit the weighting to each of these tests. So if there's a test you would like to change the weighting of the scoring with it, we can do that for you, no problem. Another useful report you can schedule is a licensing report. If you do a domain summary report, have it sent, say, monthly, and what format you would like it in, a maximum items, I'd always recommend going to a high number just to make sure it covers all domains you have added. And you can have it emailed to whomever you would like and change the subject line. Click on save and your, the recipient you entered here will receive a monthly report on the first of every month containing the license count per domain. That is a very high level overview. Obviously there's a lot more settings and configuration in there, but with our Spam Titan MSP Cloud, we host these in AWS. These servers are built for you in a region and location of your choosing. We monitor these servers 24 seven, and we have very tight SLAs if any issues ever did occur. We will also provide you the servers with what we see as the optimal spam detection, but these can all be tweaked as I showed. Everybody's email is different, so systems need to be able to change and modify per, per domain and per customer. So we can do that for you. Thank you.